Hi everybody. I'm going to talk about intrasacular devices and the role of intrasacular devices in brain aneurysm. The aim of this presentation is to kind of assist you where the benefits of the technology is in treating some of the aneurysms that you will see in your practice. But I'm going to mainly concentrate on the benefits of intrasacular devices and there are mainly two of them, Weber contour and then discuss mainly with the, the benefits of these intrasacular devices. I'm not going to talk much on X next stand because my friend Dr. Gula Gal is going to cover this in his presentation. Let me tell you what my practice is first. You know, I would treat aneurysms with coiling or with balloons and coiling. And that's what I do most of the times. Elective or acute, I prefer coil with balloon. And I pretty much use 90% of aneurysms in my practice treated with balloons or probably more. If I can't coil an aneurysm, with the balloon, then I probably will use intrasacular devices like web or contour. And if I can't do that, then I will consider surgery as an option. My standard technique of treatment or using intravascular approach is coil and aneurysm with or without balloon or using intrasacular devices. As I said, surgery or any about techniques are not possible or complex aneurysms unless you I have given all the options and if you can't treat them by standard techniques which I have said above then you use flow diverters. Now it's very important that you see these MC aneurysms. They, it's the same location but look at these different types of aneurysms. They're not the same. They're all different. They're only different treatment. And if you look at this, you know, I like Gwyneth Paltrow. I mean they are both are extremely pretty women but I prefer Gwyneth to the other lady, try to forget her name anyway. But the point that I'm trying to make is that some aneurysms will need stent, some aneurysms are going to need surgery. Every time you treat an aneurysm, you, you focus into what is the best for that aneurysm. So let's look at this grade 1 subarachnoid hemorrhage with a small hemorrhage. And you can see this is because of a blister aneurysm in the MCA bifurcation. Not an easy option. Different options can be considered here. Here we can see the 3D showing the blister aneurysm. And you can see that I have, you can see the middle cerebral artery, inferior branch, blister aneurysm. And our plan was to drop a stent across and I always, always put coils in the aneurysm. So you can see then here there is a mic wire and catheter across the aneurysm. And then the plan is, as you can see, I've dropped a stent and then I have dropped a, a silk stent across a baby silk vista and then I have coiled the aneurysm. And it's important in my practice I would use coiling because I know there is a risk that these aneurysms will rupture if we don't put coils and protect the aneurysm. But then it comes with a cost. Here you can see I've lost a branch, the upper branch, and I had to kind of rescue that with different techniques and eventually it opened up there was some still some sluggish flow but you can see this patient has good collateralization and he did very well as you can see on the follow-up ct scan here is another patient is a 45 year old grade one subarach with a blister aneurysm in the mca and you can see that very clearly the plan would be to drop a flow diverter and put some coils um using a jailed microcatheter and again you can see you got a stent across, you got a jailed microcatheter, and you put some coils and close the aneurysm. And you got a reasonably good result, which stays like that many years down the line, and the patient is cured. Another aneurysm, MCA bifurcation, very wide neck. I was contemplating if I could get a flow diverter uh, across or whether I can get an intrasacular device. I wasn't very happy to use intrasacular device here because I thought it will not give me a good result. And I have placed as always a baby leo stent across the aneurysm as you can see here and again a gel catheter and coil the aneurysm and you know this aneurysm is going to get cured with this treatment so important point that i want here on the slide for everybody to realize that the mortality morbidity is very low with coilings if you then put stents into the picture that it increases but not significantly but definitely there is an increase and if you start making the procedures complex you increase the mortality and morbidity of the procedure but you have to remember that 
The overall, the complete occlusion rates are still very low, including surgery. We're talking only about 50% complete occlusion Let's rates. Talk, before we talk about the endovascular intrasacral devices about stent-assisted calling, well, it is a complex procedure. We, had, we cannot deny that. And it will need antiplatelets. Sometimes you need one or two stents. You need to be good. You need to be experienced. And there can be difficulties. You see the various publications will quote different complications, but overall the complication rate is around 10 to 11 percent. As you can see, various publications where you can get branch occlusions, even though symptomatic uh, problems are less, you can still see the complication rate are in the range of 11 percent with a morbidity of around 3 to 4 percent. So why do I need intersecular? Because to prevent any any stent, any metal in the vessel. And you can see there are different intrasacular devices. But effectively, we are talking about intrasacular device, which is contour or web. Now, intrasacular devices are mainly used for wide neck complex aneurysm. So we provide, prevent stents. It's a safe procedure and it has certain definite advantages. But there are some disadvantages also. And the main thing is you don't want any antiplatelets, which is a big advantage, but it's uh, still a new evolving technology. So what is a feature of intras good intrasacular device? The, the important thing is a safe and effective device, easy to use, easy to deploy, and it should not be invisible. An important thing is the occlusion rate should match the stenting results. Everybody should be able to use it. So which is the most popular one? Well, the most popular one is the web. As you can see, it started in 2010 to 2017. I came in somewhere around 2012. And you can see that it has improved and has made a significant difference in terms of the technology that has improved over time. We now have a 17 system with lower profile and can treat small aneurysms. The indication mainly for me over the last 200 or more cases that I've done now is wide neck, unruptured, unruptured aneurysms, recurrent aneurysms, complex aneurysms. But the most important thing I've learned is when, is when you don't use web, partially thrombosis aneurysm, for example, I find them as very difficult issues and I don't think in my hands web does a great job when the size is not right when the shape is not right when you've got a rupture point at the neck and of course you need to think about cost if you can coil the aneurysm in 200 pounds why would you want to put um 2000 pounds i'm just giving an example i know web costs 9000 pounds at least to 12000 pounds and you've got to be careful and avoid adjunct devices because they're increasing the cost so let's look at different ways people are using web you can use web on its own you can use web with a stand or you can use web with a cause. I personally or don't do these two things very often. Sometimes I might use coils, but I certainly don't intend to use web with a stent and it's not in my practice. Let's look at this MC aneurysm here. It's a wide neck MCA unruptured aneurysm. Simple to treat. You might want to use different devices, but web makes it look really easy. You go in, drop the basket, and you treat the aneurysm as you can see here. If you and it's completely gone. You can use web in a smaller aneurysms now because of the 17 system. Here is a tiny aneurysm, and you can see the fall of the aneurysm is gone. Here is a large aneurysm where you know that you might have to use some coils and you can cock the aneurysm and you can treat the aneurysm by placing some coils distally with the catheter and cock the aneurysm with the web and treat the aneurysm and the aneurysm is completely occluded and you can be very quick in terms of treating these large aneurysms. If you look at all the data which has been published with the safety, we all know that it is uh, the mortality morbidity is very low. Web is safe, no question. Web is safe, you can treat it and it's reasonably easy to do now compared to when we started in 2012. To the occlusion rates also as now, because of web, we have this new occlusion system um, or scale where you have the adequate occlusion, which includes complete occlusion with the right remnant. And there is a lot of debate about this. Some people will say it's not necessarily the right thing to do. But again, if you look at the, the adequate occlusion rates are in the range of around 
80 percent so it's not 100 percent and the retreatment rate in patients with web is around nine percent some centers this can vary you know in my own experience it's around 10 percent in my at my center let's look at a case here he's a young guy he's great for subarach he's got an mca aneurysm the hematoma was going to go in they wanted to take it out and if they want to take it out you want to treat this aneurysm you want to be very quick you want to get a good result you can just go in drop a web in close the aneurysm and patient can go in for hematoma removal and you can see the follow -up looks extremely good if you can't coil or you can't clip or you can't web well you can use other devices called pulse rider device what is a pulse rider it's a neck bridging device which has got a metal in so obviously it's not a true intrasacular device and you can go through the device and treat the aneurysm as you can see here this is an acom aneurysm and this patient unfortunately had an mc aneurysm so you got two aneurysms they don't look different this looks like good for web this doesn't look like good for web so what do you do you can drop a web here into this aneurysm treat the aneurysm with web and then you go on the right side mc aneurysm you then drop the device um, as you can see here the pulse rider is dropped across and you can see the markers of the device here very nicely there is a stem here drop the device across go inside and coil the aneurysm and that's what we've done and the job was done and it looks pretty good what are the indications for pulse rider well basically you know some recurrences like web recurrences some post clipping post calling recurrences it could be used an alternative for t or y stenting but you know there is a disadvantage you need antiplatelets you do you it doesn't have any flow diverter properties there is no long term data and it's not been done much in acute cases okay so we we not we need to be very careful when we use the device what about p corners well it's Again, when you don't want to web, you could think about an alter device for pulse rider. You can have a peak conus. Again, it is a disadvantage because you have to give antiplatelets. So let's look at a case here. You've got a wide neck MC aneurysm. You drop the device into the neck of the aneurysm and you can coil the aneurysm. And you can do a great job. Look at that. And it looks perfect. What about this one? Look at this MC aneurysm. And you can see this MC aneurysm. You drop the device and then you can coil the aneurysm and it looks pretty good and you got a follow-up that looks very good again the data shows that it is very safe but the occlusion rates are still around 80 percent so not 100 percent but adequate occlusion is around 80 percent in these devices about these devices pulse rider or peak corners they do not offer flow diversion they only good for like stent assisted coiling and they don't reduce the risk of recurrence necessarily they are not bad alternatives for y stenting or teen stenting when you're particularly thinking of old patients some patients which have poor access and you know you're not going to get a t stent or y stent or a web end then you might think of these as an options they need long-term antiplatelets and that's a disadvantage let's look at web on the other hand you know you've got a grade 5 subarachnoid hemorrhage you have a CT that shows the blood. You can see the aneurysm here. You can see it's a wide neck aneurysm, very wide neck aneurysm. Clearly, going to be a complicated one. But if you have a web, you can drop the web in the aneurysm, and you can see that complete occlusion in two years with no flow within the aneurysm, and that's really pretty good. And the technology has got better with this young lady with a acom aneurysm that you can see, and you can see I've gone in, even though a little bit of irregular shape of this aneurysm I managed to drop a web in and then the web has a has caused complete occlusion this lady had spasm and you can see on this when you brought in for angioplasty you can see the aneurysm was still occluded and it shows the angioplasty there and occlusion of the aneurysm so web is very effective with complete occlusion rates although very less around 33 percent but adequate occlusion seems to be still around 80 percent but we all know web has problems. What are the main problems? One is the sizing. Sizing is a big problem. Sometimes it's difficult to track. There's other issues with the catheter. But one of the biggest problems, which I'm going to show, and I can't highlight all the problems, but you can see that the sizing can be issue. Here is a case done by one of my colleagues where you can see the MCA aneurysm, and then it's been web put in. But you can see that this it is it's small. It's underfilling. And because of that, this aneurysm is not protected. So I had to go in 
and then try and get some coils around and then I have protected the aneurysm and I have closed that as you can see the aneurysm is protected now and you can see this coils 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 and you protect the aneurysm and then you can see when you're happy with it you stop and then you can see the stasis at the end and the follow-up shows occlusion of the aneurysm let's look at another case here this was when I was proctoring a basilar termination and it was slightly oversized and then you can see this restriction of the flow in the left P1 and we had to drop an atlas 10 there and then you got a good flow and let's I understand some people actually do it intentionally I personally don't think that's a good idea because it's too expensive and you need to think whether you really want to do that when you have when you're anyway going to use stent is web a perfect device but it's safe effective easy can you see it long-term antiplatelets or not but it is not easy to size the occlusion rates are still not that great in terms when you compare it with stents and it's a not an easy device in terms of like you need some experience and learning curve so what do we need? we need an intersecular device which is easy to size deploy put into aneurysm has a combined properties where it works like a web and a flow diverter safe as a web effective as a stenting and anybody can do it so he's contour it yes contour is a very good alternative it's got double braiding at the neck and it basically is still safe and is very effective much more than web as you can see it's a 90 knot device it's got a limited sizes that we have so we can deploy it in the neck of the aneurysm and here you can see that the device is being placed in the neck of the aneurysm as you can see and then you can kind of bring it and uh, open it and bring it to the neck and you deploy it and if you want to see what the flow diversion is as you can see there is a flow diversion very good the contrast is injected it it goes around the device when you compare a web with a contour well, a contour is a neck bridging device whereas web occupies the volume of the aneurysm but you can see a good example here I see a termination aneurysm in a lady which had previously coiled and you can see that the device has been placed at the neck of the aneurysm and the immediate stasis is seen within the aneurysm and the aneurysm appears occluded that looks a pretty good result and at six months you have a complete occlusion of the aneurysm 12 months again and at two years again the aneurysm is completely occluded we published our data recently and we can see our occlusion rates are much higher in contour compared to the web so for me contour and web they both are safe this web contour seems to show similar to what we would see a flow diversion a progressive occlusion of the aneurysm it's easy to size easy to deploy takes away all the pain that you had web and it gives you much better occlusion rates and it's a lot easy to use this is another ICA termination aneurysm that you can see and you can see there is a device that has been placed across the neck and you can see image stasis there and then a six month follow up occlusion and you can see the device is stable it doesn't move and has complete occlusion so can we do better than this well we can because we can need an intersecular device that we can use in acute where we don't need any stents we don't need any antiplatelets it's safe well, this is a case lent to me by my colleagues from Canada. It's a basilar aneurysm that you can see. And then it's got CTA, which is a coil, and then it has obviously come with recurrence. And then you can see the you know, massive recurrence. And these are difficult. Again, you would probably consider stent, but well, you have different options. You might think of a flow, diverter, contour, but then there is a what we could use is an extent with coil. I'm not going to talk in detail because Gula is going to talk in detail in this talk. But look at this. You get a device that sits at the neck. You go through the device. And it's a very similar device to contour. Slightly less braiding. But you can go through it so that you can then coil and you can treat the aneurysm. So it's a big advantage of next end which can be effectively used in acute aneurysms too. And here you can see this aneurysm has got significant recurrence. You can drop, um, put some coils at the top. And then they have dropped a neck stent in the bottom of the aneurysm here and then they have continued to coil the aneurysm and that has got excellent good result of the aneurysm with a complete occlusion 
and you can see on the follow-up there is complete occlusion of the aneurysm and the angiogram shows also complete occlusion as you can see so intracellular devices work when in summary we it's a safety and effective treatment it's a good treatment for many aneurysms it's a uh, it's web is also safe contour is also safe but effectively you what i'm trying to say here is all these intracellular devices are significantly making a big difference in terms of the management. They are safe, they are effective, and progressively, web being the initial device, but now contour and extend seem to be making a much more effective treatment and safer option than even web. There are other devices that we can think of and assure, but they are certainly not pure intracellular devices, but they also can work in specific conditions. Thank you very much.